Hello everyone, this is a presentation that I gave in the Mediterranean Orthodontic Congress in October 2018. It was held in Alexandria in Egypt and the title was Which Bracket Prescription is Better? Roth, MBT or a Hybrid? So when you go to the market and you want to choose a bracket, what are the things that you look at? You look at first the material of the bracket. Is it going to be metal? Is it going to be ceramic? Is it going to be a resin? What do you prefer? And then you look at the type. Are you going to see a regular bracket, a self-ligating bracket, a tip edge bracket, or any other variant? What's the prefer preference that you like? And then you go for prescription. Everybody has a prescription that he likes. Is it Andrews, Alexander, Ricketts, Roth, MBT, Damon, etc. What's the prescription that you like? And then you see for the brand, the quality, the design, the size. Do you like the brackets to be rounded or do you like them to be more rhomboidal in shape? Do you like your brackets to have auxiliaries like a vertical slot or not? And finally, you choose the bracket system that you like and you buy these and hopefully you stay with them for some time since you get used to them. The topic of today is only going to discuss the bracket prescription. Now how I understand bracket prescription is that it's composed of five things torque, tip, in out width, rotation and slot of the bracket. Now regarding torque it's the rotation of the tooth in the labiolingual direction caused by the angle between the wire and the bracket slot. Now this may be positive when the, the root is moving lingually and the crown is moving labially and it may be negative if the opposite the root is moving labially and the crown is moving lingually. For all the brackets the torque value will range from 0 to 22 degrees whether that's in the positive side or in the negative side. However, you should not overstress torque because torque is expression is very weak. You have about 10 degrees of play between a 1925 stainless steel wire and a bracket slot. If you factor in the rounding of the wire and the rounding of the brackets, the slots and the flexibility of the materials you're using and the amount of uh, uh, wear that happens between the materials, you actually get a play which is much higher. That's why a little bit of play or a little bit of increase or decrease in torque really isn't that big deal in torque expression, unlike in tip which we'll describe later. So the next feature is tip and this differs between brackets and is mainly expressed in the upper laterals and canines it will range from 0 degrees up to 8 degrees. Tip is the angle between the wire and in the, uh, the bracket slot when you're looking at the bracket from face on. It rotates the tooth root medially and distally and this is expressed heavily in bracket prescription so even a change of 1 degree could have a significant effect on the root position. For the in-out difference, this is an increase of 0.5 millimeters on some brackets where you would find the base is thicker than the normal brackets. This is mainly done in the lower incisors and the upper laterals and the upper fives in the MBT technique to push these teeth slightly more lingually. For rotation, sometimes you get two or one degrees of rotation control in prescriptions for brackets but this is mostly seen for molar tubes where you have an offset of up to 10 degrees in some molar tubes depending on the bracket prescription. Another very important feature is the slot. Now slots come in 18 and 22. Now when you have the expression of torque in an 18 or in a 22 slot, it varies very considerably. If you've got a 1622 wire in an 18 slot, 
the play is only around 7 degrees. Whereas if you've got it in a 22 one, it's about 20 degrees. This is about 13 degrees more just because you used a, a wider slot. If you've got an 1821-25 wire, you notice that it's 1 to 11, also 10 degrees of torque expression. So torque expression heavily relies on the slot dimension. If you have an 18 slot dimension, you've got about 10 extra degrees of torque expression. And this is why when you need more torque expression, using 18 brackets on one tooth or a segment of teeth or all the arch can substitute for using heavier gauge wires if you don't want to use heavy gauge wires. So you only use uh, smaller slots, which is the 18 slot. This is not the truth for tip. In the tip, when you've got uh, the 1622 wire in an 18 slot, you've got a play of about 0.9 or 1 degree. Whereas in the 22 slot, it's 2.3 degrees. This is only one degree difference. The same goes for an 1825 wire. It's a 0.2 by 1.6. It's about one degree difference only. So the amount of difference is so minimal when it comes to tip. So using an 18 slot bracket on a single tooth or multiple teeth heavily increases the torque expression but really doesn't affect that much the tip expression. Now I know many would say that regardless the bracket's prescription, I can fix it by using torques and bends and in the wire, but the, the lecture is mainly devoted to people who like to use straight wires and play with the bracket prescription rather than bending the wires. Now going back in history, Heavy forces were used with small gauge wires and that deepened the, uh, the, the bite and the interiorly and made lateral open bites which was called the roller coaster effect or the wagon wheel effect. This drove Andrews in 1972 to publish his famous research on 122 non-orthodontic normal cases and he found the tip and torque for normal individuals. Notice for the tip, all the teeth are positively tipped so that there's no negative numbers. All the teeth, the crowns are directed more mesially. And this is especially true for the upper lateral and canines. So when Andrews designed his straight wire appliance, when he tackled tip, he increased the tip in the anterior, the upper and lower anterior region, in which he increased the tip 1 to 3 degrees on each tooth. This was specially designed so that the, upper, the teeth would uprighten themselves and therefore he will get rid of the wagon wheel effect. How he tackled the torque, when he looked at the original research numbers, he noticed that the maxillary incisors have a positive torque, whereas all the other teeth have a negative torque. The negative torque in the maxillary teeth were almost the same from minus 7 up to minus 12. It, there wasn't a marked difference here, especially between the canine and the premolars. Whereas for the lower teeth, it was consequently increasing, as you notice, from minus 2 all the way up to minus 36 way back for the second molars. So what did he do for the uh, prescription of the straight wire appliance? Well, basically he didn't do much. If you notice the numbers, he didn't even tackle the torque. So for normal patients, Andrews regarded that he increases tip and not torque. But he also recognized that not all cases are class 1. So for class 1 cases, he left torque the same. For class 2 cases, he designed a special bracket in which there is less torque on the upper incisors and more torque on the lower incisors to tip the uh, upper incisors back and tip the lower incisors forward in an attempt to correct the uh, malocclusion 
of the class 2 malocclusion. The opposite was true for class 3. He also designed upper incisor brackets that have more torque to procline them and lower incisor brackets that have less torque to retrocline them. I don't know if you realize that the increase and decrease in torque was always 5 degrees. And we'll come to that because in every slide, in every prescription, we'll notice that torque is always increased by 5 degree increments and not by 1 degree increments like in tip. And that's because torque is not expressed as tip. Andrews also designed power arms, counter angulation and counter rotation for translational brackets which are brackets that need sliding effects. And that's why for Andrews, you'll notice that there were so many bracket types and it was so complicated that it needed a lot of uh, resources. So shortly after, Roth came along and he designed his appliance that replaced the large and expensive inventory with one set of brackets used for a wide range of cases from class one, two, or three. So what did Roth do? Well, Roth, the canine tip was increased from 11 to 13 and from 5 to 7. And this was to counteract the increase in torque that he placed on the interior teeth. Whereas the buckle and lower, uh, the buckle and lower posterior region, he decreased the amount of tip. Now this tip originally used to move the crowns more medially. So he regarded that as it's an early loss of anchorage. So why would we lose anchorage early? So he decreased the amount of torque or the tip on the posterior region so that he keeps them upright and prevents them from moving medially. That was his change for tip. But for torque, if you notice that he regarded the upper interior teeth, he increased the torques by five degrees each meaning that he's going to procline them and push the roots more inside the bone and procline the incisors and the canine crowns more labially. And he, this, that, that was as an attempt for overcorrection so that when the teeth go back, they'll go back to a normal position. He also decreased the torque of the molars and that was because he viewed that the palatal cusps of the molars were sticking down and he wanted to push the crowns more lingually so that the occlusal plane becomes more flat. If you notice, the lower arch was not even tampered with. It stayed the same. As a summary for the Roth appliance, he used one set. Upper and lower canines were given more tip as a sign of overcorrection. The upper anterior teeth had more torque also for overcorrection. There was a decreased tip in both upper and lower buccal segments to enhance anchorage early in treatment. And the upper molars had less torque as motor control. So what are the indications of froth appliance now? Well, basically I would say that a class one case with or without extraction would do fine with Roth appliance. A mild class three case that is designed to be treated by upper proclination would also work fine, but it is not the ideal solution for class two cases. So after that, MBT started appearing and they published several publications. The first was in 1993, then followed 97, 2001, 2009, and the latest in 2014. But the most famous was in 2001, that was named Systemized Orthodontic Treatment Mechanics that introduced the MBT system to the world. So what did they notice? They noticed that Roth noticed that the tip in the molar region was a significant drain on the anchorage in the leveling stage. They also noted that the tip in the interior region was also draining the anchorage and therefore they decreased the tip in the interior region. Remember that the tip is expressed even with round wires in the leveling stage, not like the anchorage which is only expressed with rectangular wires. So the disadvantages of adding the interior tip they noted is that it created a significant drain on anchorage 
it increased the tendency to bite deepening during the alignment stage, it brought the upper canine root apices too close to the first premolar roots in some cases. So what they did is they decreased the amount of tip significantly in the anterior region, the upper and lower. And if you notice, the main one was the canines. They decreased them by five and four degrees of tip. And this is an important thing to remember since they returned back to the original Andrews research and did not increase the anterior teeth tip at all. Whereas for the torque, you would notice that most of the brackets changed their torque and it was significant change mostly by fives or factors of fives so that it has a significant impact on torque expression. For the interior segment, the upper incisors got a positive five on the incisors and the upper lateral and central incisor to procline them as for overcorrection. And this was especially useful for the treatment of class two division one cases. Then opposite happened in the lower where they decreased the amount of torque and that was so that the lower incisors were retroclined rather than proclined and this was very useful when you're using class 2 the elastics because you get proclination of those lower incisors so that you keep the roots within the bone they designed the brackets to move the crowns a little bit more uh, lingually to keep them more upright the canines, on the other hand, were made in two versions. The zero version, which was generally designed for extraction cases, and the plus and minus version, which you could invert. The negative torque brackets were designed for wider arches, and the zero torqued brackets for moderate arches, and the positive torque ones, they were designed for narrower arches. The thing is that most of the manufacturers made the canine brackets with the negative torque brackets. And these were designed for wide arches that are not so common in Caucasians. Only recently, most of the manufacturers are making them in zero torque, which is for moderate arches, which is something sensible. And although that we still lack the positive torque brackets, which in my thing, idea, I think that we need these brackets more than we need the negative torque brackets. For the lower posterior region, they increased the amount of torque by factors of five. This meant that the uprightening the crowns of the lower posterior region, and this was to build the, the develop the lower arch, especially in small lower arches associated with class two malocclusion. This was especially true in the seven region where they noticed that the sevens were extremely lingually tipped, they called it rolled in. So as a summary for the MBT appliance, it is one set, it uses less tip on upper and lower anterior teeth, it proclined the upper incisors and retroclined the lower incisors, and uprightened the lower buccal teeth. So where do you indicate the MBT appliance? mainly in class 2 cases that are going to be treated by intermaxillary elastics or extraction of upper force. Also in mild class 3s that are going to be treated by torque alone by the use of upper and lower incisor torquing. But it is not, doesn't work well for class 1 cases as it will procline the upper incisors, retrocline the lowers, giving more incisal show and increased overjet which is not desirable in class one cases. And it is not indicated in class three uh, cases where you are going to use class three elastics, since it's going to increase the amount of lingual tipping of the lower incisors. So as a summary, if you're comparing between Roth and MBT, for the upper arch, MBT focused on torquing the upper incisors, the crowns labially, Roth focused on more tip on the canines, both aiming to control the roller coaster effect, but torque different than tip. Tip is expressed immediately during leveling, torque is expressed later on in treatment where you have more control over anchorage. 
for the lower arch MBT tended to decrease the amount of torque on the lower incisors so that you get lingual tipping of the lower incisors and uprightened the molars and this was also indicated in small mandibles that needed to be more developed especially when using intermaxillary elastics on the other hand Roth only increased the amount of tip on the lower on the lower canines just in an attempt to control the roller coaster effect when we look at the newer appliances like Damon brackets you would notice that they would produce them in high torque low torque and uh, medium torque and most of the interior brackets upper and lower brackets are designed like that and this got me thinking that I think that, that this time we shouldn't use just one set of brackets when you look at one set one patient you shouldn't think that am I going to use MBT or Roth alone it's not just MBT or Roth can I use a hybrid in between them can I use some features of one and leave the other well let's have examples if you have critical anchorage then using the canine brackets of the Roth uh, brackets they have an extremely high tip which is going to drain your anchorage immediately during leveling stage so I'd recommend at least changing the canine brackets to MBT brackets unless you're going to control anchorage anyway using TADS or other methods so that your anchorage isn't that critical anymore the more important feature is posterior crossbite. If you have crossbite, then you need to not upper, you need to tip the lower molars more lingually. And if you have scissor bite, then you need to uprighten the lower molars. So since there's a significant difference in torque between the Roth and MBT, when you're treating crossbite, lower molar brackets should be Roth. And if you're treating scissor bites, then using MBT lower molar um, teeth, the prescription is highly advised. If you're using class 2 elastics, then I would advise using the MBT system, especially in the lower anterior region. If you're using class 3 elastics, on the other hand, then no, you, the Roth prescription would be much more beneficial for these cases. And that concludes today. I thank you for your listening. Thank you for having me. Finally, I thank you for watching. I hope this topic was interesting and you made some benefit from it. If you liked the video, please like it, share it, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe to the channel by pressing on the photo here on the left hand side. And I'd like to hear any uh, comments from you. And thank you again.